第二十二队演讲题目是 Number Three， 计时开始。Dear judges, ladies, and gentlemen, we're happy to be here and stand here to give you our speech. During the 15th century, the Portuguese discovered a small island off the coast of China and called it Formosa, which means beautiful island. And today, it is the country of Taiwan. Taiwan is an island country rich in history, geology, and cultures with spectacular sceneries. And various botanical, entomological, and ornithological species. To help my friend coming from New South Boundary Policy to Taiwan, I'll let them know how beautiful Taiwan is. On their first day in Taiwan, I'll take them to Taipei 101, the tallest building in Taiwan and the second in the world. I'll take them to the top of the building and view all Taipei City. I think that would be amazing. Taipei 101 is not only the landmark of Taiwan, but also our lofty goals for Taiwan. Next, I'll let them try some unique special Taiwanese dishes. Because of Taiwan's history and various culture, Taiwan's culinary art have made it a kingdom of delicacies. For instance, a traditionally popular and delicious Taiwanese dish is called braised pork rice, or in Mandarin, ru rou fan, which means braised meat rice. Made with pork braised primarily in soy sauce and other aromatics, it is enjoyed by all ages and culture. So I think my friends from New South Bound countries will enjoy this delicacy and enjoy this trip. The night market culture is also a marvel of Taiwan. People in Taiwan like to visit night markets, rain or shine. There are night markets in almost every major township. They are known for their expensive and normal products. Oyster omelette, sticky tofu, bubble milk tea are a few things that attract people to the night market. First timer to Taiwan are curious about the festival and post custom in Taiwan. For example, the Lantern Festival is seemingly an unending exhibition of lanterns celebrating annually on the fifth day of the first New Year month to mark the grand finale of the Chinese New Year's celebrations. It is also the very first full moon day of the New Year, symbolizing the coming of the spring. The releasing of sky lanterns for wishing or blessing, along with the firecracker for getting close to luck and get rid of doom, is quite an experience for first timer or foreigners to Taiwan. I think they will enjoy this festival and trip. Taiwan's government currently designates 16 specific Aboriginal tribes. Aboriginal ceremonies can be further intriguing to visitors. For example, the Bunong's Year Festival is a celebration of the warrior spirit. The Army's Harvest Festival is not only about Thanksgiving for the harvest, but also paying respect to the funeral rites of their parents with continued sacrificing. Pasta Eye is a ceremony in which Seisha tribe make confessions to the short people. Such diversity makes Taiwan a very special place. So I will arrange a visit to the foreign friends, to Aboriginal tribes for experiencing the Aboriginal cultures. For three days and two nights, we'll travel through Taiwan's famous landmarks, such like Taipei 101, and Aboriginal cultural tribal areas, such as Tana Hiku. After the trip, we hope that we can get details of Southeast Asian countries' cultures as return. We also hope that we can show the globalizations, the global citizens that we, Taiwan, and the Southeast Asian countries, we could cooperate and lead to a perfect success. After the success, we will have the confidence. With the confidence, we will have the courage. With the courage, we will be more, much easier for us to step out into the international society and do all we want to do. 
Thanks you. Three, two, one. Thank you. 第二十一对演讲题目是 Number Five， 计时开始。Good morning, everyone. We are Team Twenty One. Today, our topic is Number Five. Since 2016, the government has has been working hard to implement several new initiatives in order to increase the economies. 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 One of them is is South Pond policies, targeting Southeast and South countries, New Zealand and Australia. As positive, as potential partners, as a potential partners, as. As potential partners for regional, for regional, for region, for regional social and economies, and and what's the role we play? The young people do. Gina, <clears throat> as for my school, we get senior high school students. We receive foreign students from our sister school, such as Japan and Malaysia. <clears throat> Having foreign students from other country visit you is any joyful? As as a result, I'm eager to I'm eager to take part in the activities to welcome them. We manage work out interesting game to play or complete with them. For instance, we play. Charades is a challenge game. It's a challenge game for both of us. We have we have to try all our best to speak totally English. Well, <clears throat> the awards of the winner team is our local food, fried chicken, Taiwan. Taiwanese stinky tofu and pearl milk tea. How funny and interesting! Joy. Based on this valuable experience and unforgettable memories, I hope that I could go on more beneficial things to our diplomatic to to our diplomatic relationship. My cousin is an international volunteer, who is a college college student. He just came back from Vietnam. He told the children their English, and advised them to pay attention to their san sanitation. He, I t I was told a lot about miserable and touching story. That makes me want to be a volunteer. He did. Maybe our young people couldn't do much to our nation, but I'm convinced that each one of us has potentials to to promote our country's international situations, as well as in high visibility. What we desire is to create promising southbound development. We're passionate, we're energetic, and we all love Taiwan. Thank you. The 十九对演讲题目是 Number Two， 计时开始。As global citizens, we think international etiquette is essential not only in our daily life but also in communication with people from around the world. According to Cambridge Dictionary, etiquette can be defined as the set of rules or custom that can, that control accepted behavior in particular groups or situations. Moreover, some aspects of etiquette can vary from culture to culture, or even from city to city in a nation. Therefore, we should be aware of cultural nuances every time we visit a new place. As global citizens, it's inevitable that we interact with people from around the world socially or professionally. 
the more interaction we have with them, the more crucial international etiquette becomes. As a result, it's important for us to understand international etiquette so as to communicate well with people from around the world. Next, my partner will continue the speech. Since international etiquette covers various aspects of rules and custom, it serves as a premise if we want to foster good relationship with other countries as global citizen. When we are interact with our international counterpart, getting to know the do's and don'ts help us extend our knowledge about a culture and thus reduce unnecessary misunderstanding. In other words, learning international etiquette shows not only our desire to get to know them, but also our respect toward them. My friend once shared with us their experience having a course cultural curriculum with an Indonesian school. In the course, students from both sides demonstrate how the local delicacy were made through filming. At the end of the semester, they even sent packages of snacks to each other. Since those Indonesians were Muslim and they don't eat pork, students and teachers in Taiwan double check the snack and assure their partner school in advance that low snack contain no ingredient related to pork. This out of thoughtfulness exhibit Taiwanese students' understanding of Muslim culture. And this pleasant experience of cooperation cemented their long-term relationship. From this example, it is clear that having vast knowledge about international etiquette helps strengthen the bond with our fellow partner. Next, my partner will continue her speech. On the other hand, lack of international etiquette is very likely to cause misunderstanding or even hostility. When people fail to pay attention to proper etiquette, they might end up offending other people, losing their jobs, or even destroy a friendship. What's worse, ignorance about etiquette might even lead to people intolerance toward other cultures and thus create conflicts. These conflicts might arise not just because of people's negligence of etiquette, but also because of people's insensitivity toward cultural differences. For instance, punctuality and time are perceived differently in many cultures. In Germany, people are expected to arrive at least 10 minutes earlier than the scheduled time. The Japanese and people from South Korea will be just on time. For them, being just one minute behind is considered being late. However, in Middle Eastern country, it is acceptable to be as much as an hour late. And in Malaysia, being an hour late is an, is an accepted norm that does not require an apology. With all these diverse concepts of time, conflicts could occur because people who are chronically late may be referred to as disrespectful for those following punctuality. Next, my partner will continue the speech. As mentioned above, international etiquette holds a key to effective communication. It is essential to be aware that etiquette may evolve over time or vary among cultures. That is, even though some etiquette may be universally correct, some may not be applicable to other cultures. In response to the complexity of etiquette, we should keep updated with rules around the world and bear in mind that it's always advisable for us to broaden our knowledge about the country we might have contact with. By doing so, we can establish positive long-term relationships when interacting with others. In brief, if we are equipped with good international etiquette, we are more likely to grow into well-mannered, humble, and tolerant individuals. These characteristics, in turn, may become advantages for us when it comes to interacting with people on the international stage. And this is why we consider good international etiquette crucial for us as global citizens. Thank, Thank you. The 十八对演讲题目是 number three. Good morning, everyone. Taiwan is an amazing island which holds abundant wonders that can be explored by visitors from all over the world. Everyone who comes to Taiwan can feel the kindness and warmth that emanates from all of the people living in Taiwan. From our modern capital city, Taipei, down to the bustling harbor city, Kaohsiung, there are various beautiful sights and mouth-watering street food on every corner. As one of the most developed countries in Asia, 
with the convenient transportation and the Wi-Fi available all over the island, it is very easy for tourists to travel and visit around Taiwan. So if our friends from Southeast Asia were to come to Taiwan, which places should be recommended to them? This is a hard question to answer, since there are so many things to do and see here. Later, through my partner's elaboration, we will show how we are going to plan this wonderful trip. Thank you, Zoe. For a short trip that is only three days, it is crucial to show our friends the essence of Taiwan. The first thing we like to show them is the modernization of Taiwan. Therefore, when they arrive at Taoyuan Airport on the first day, we'll take our friends to ride on the airport MRT, which only takes about 35 minutes to Taipei City. Then, we'll go to the most bustling area, the Xingyi District. From there, not only can they see all of Taipei from a bird's eye view at the top of Taipei 101, the highest building in Taiwan, they can also feel the vibrancy of Taiwanese fashion and design from the busy shopping area. During the first night, we'll take our friends to Shilin Night Market to enjoy the well-known Taiwanese street foods. They will also notice the hardworking people who are making new innovative food, combining different cultures and eras to create a unique Taiwan experience. That's right, Emily. On the second day, we plan to show them another important dimension of Taiwan, quality agriculture. So the first spot will be our orchid farm in Zhanghua. Our friends will be astonished by the variety of the orchids there can be and how the florists take care of those delicate flowers. Later in the afternoon, we will show our friends another musty in Taiwan, Ali Shan. We can enjoy the world-renowned oolong tea there after a short stroll around the tea farm, which is full of aroma. We'll spend the night in the mountains. Then early morning the next day, we will take our friends to see the famous Alisan sunrise. After that, we will directly go to Kaohsiung to visit the largest harbor of Taiwan and enjoy a romantic boat ride on the Love River. Through the visit, they can discover more about our sea transportation, which is another success in Taiwan. After that, at last, our friends can fly back home from Kaohsiung International Airport with a better understanding of Taiwan and a lot of wonderful memories. Exactly, Jordan. Taiwan is an advanced country which is full of creativity and modern technology. In northern Taiwan, we can take our friends to our financial center, the area around Taipei 101, to feel the active economic activities and the modern trends. Then, go to the middle of Taiwan to see the progressive tea farming and plant breeding technology. Our trip finally ends up in southern Taiwan, Kaohsiung, where they can learn about our largest harbor and ocean shipping. While they are moving around Taiwan, they can enjoy the convenience of our transportation network and the local delicacies. There are still a lot more distinguished features and famous attractions we would like to introduce to our foreign friends. The more they know about us, the more likely they are to work with us. We, as the future of Taiwan, should try our best to promote our country. By doing so, we will assuredly be able to Create a better tomorrow. Thank you. 第十七对演讲题目是 Number One. 计时开始 Good morning. The story of Taiwan's success always reminds me of how David in the Bible, who fearlessly defeated Goliath, were never afraid of challenges. Under fierce global competition we still shine on the world stage. Meanwhile, we never leave our allies behind. The footprints of Taiwan's charity events can be found all around the world. Next, my friend Claire will share one of Taiwan's characteristics, our perseverance. Thank you, Yuxuan. 
The only way for Taiwan to compete with other countries is to improve its talents. Take 2017 Summer University, for example. Since Taipei was elected to be the host city, everyone has engaged in showcasing the brand Taiwan to the world. The prefabricated swimming pools and the coherent visual identity impressed everyone. However, what contributes to this event success is our athletes, who won a record-breaking 26 gold medals. Xu Shujing, Guo Xingchun, Dai Ziying, Yang Junhan, Zheng Zhaochun, numerous young athletes devoted themselves to nothing but one goal, to glorify Taiwan. Some of them could have left for other competitions with higher prize. Despite great pressure, those athletes surpassed themselves and used their performance to honor Taiwan. They are perfect examples of Taiwan's perseverance. They are what makes Taiwan shine like a sun. Next, my friend Quan will share Taiwan's another characteristic, our empathy for others. Thank you, Claire. Mother Teresa said, let us touch the dying, the poor, the lonely, and the unwanted, and let us not be ashamed or slow to do the humble work. Taiwan used to be a charity import country, now has become a charity export country. Whenever a natural disaster strikes, our rescue team, medical team, and volunteers are ready to help in no time. In Nepal, Japan, Sichuan, Haiti, or even on the Himalayas, Taiwan's rescue teams and volunteers are there to save lives, to restore homes, and to comfort broken hearts. Apart from disaster relief, Taiwan has been helping its allies build infrastructure and establish educational programs. We built libraries in Tanzania. We protect refugees in Syria. We start children care plan in Myanmar. We do everything as long as it benefits others. By doing so, we show the world that Taiwan is a country of empathy, which always reaches out a helping hand. Next, my friend Zhi Jun will share Taiwan's another standout quality, our diversity. Thank you, Quan. Low ranking 134th in the size map of world countries, the diversity of Taiwan is beyond one's imagination. Taiwan is home to a broad variety of different species, which has the highest density in the world. Within two hours, a tourist can travel from a mountain covered with snow to the ocean surrounded by coconut trees. Besides astonishing biodiversity, Taiwan has second highest religion diversity in the world as well, which is a model of tolerance. Tolerance allows us to embrace the differences between everyone. Indigenous culture, traditional Chinese culture, and custom from our neighboring country are all interwoven together here. Instead of being a melting pot, Taiwan is more like the stone soup in a traditional tale, which integrates everyone's unique quality to make itself better and better. Next, Yu Xuan will conclude our speech. Thank you, Zhi Jun. By perseverance, by empathy, and by embracing diversity, Taiwan has its stand in the world. Whenever confronted an obstacle, Taiwan can always respond instantly. Whenever hearing a catastrophe, Taiwan never hesitates to help. Taiwan truly understands what a great country needs, that is, the faith to make this world better. Thank you. The 16th演講題目是 number 3,即時開始. Good morning, dear judges and fellow students. If I had friends from the target nations of our new southbound policy come to stay for three days, 
I would definitely take them around to witness the beauty and the culture of Taiwan. Then my friends will tell you how to take them around Formosa. Thank you, Cindy. On the first day, I would like to show them around Taipei and visit some landmark tourist attractions, such as Taipei 101 and the Earthlit 24-hour bookstore. A visit to Taipei 101 can remind our foreign friends that Taipei is a metropolitan city and is able to offer a world-class office environment, which is worthy of consideration as an advantageous location for multinational corporations. After that, we will go to Yangmingshan National Park. It is an excellent resort if visitors want to seek an escape from city life and get closer to the nature. You can hike a trail, enjoy a breathtaking view, and taste a real smell of sulfuric fumes from a volcano. At night, we will go to the Earthlit 24-hour bookstore by taking the world-class metro, Taipei and MRT. On the way, I'm sure they will be amazed by the reliable, friendly, and clean services. As for the elite bookstore, it has helped a lot in shaping Taipei as a city of culture. Visitors will know why once they enter the Earthlit 24-hour bookstore. They will be deeply impressed by the reading culture in an expansive reading space and feel spontaneously attracted to it. Thanks, Kenny. On the second day, I plan to take them to a suburban town called Jiaofen, located in a mountain. It is the city of history, witnessing the social changes in the Taiwanese society for decades. It used to be a town famous for gold rush, especially during the Japanese era. However, with the receding gold rush, it embarked on transforming itself into a town of tourism, especially after the famous movie City of Sadness was shot there. Foreign tourism, especially from Japan and Hong Kong, like to visit here because it's a town with unique Taiwanese culture and story. In the evening, I will arrange a food testing journey by visiting the world-famous Shilin Night Market. It is an excellent spot for a test bus to try about a variety of local Taiwanese delicacies. What's more important, the night market is representative enough of the night night of Taiwan because it offers a place for people to seek fun at night. Exactly, Lisa. On the last day, I will take them to the east coast of Taiwan. A trip to the east coast is not complete without visiting the world-famous Taroko National Park. Visitors around the world enjoy a hike there because on the way they can appreciate marble walled canyons, lush vegetation, and mountainous landscape. This will leave them standing in awe of the wonder of nature. After that, we will visit the indigenous tribes in Hualien and gain a deeper insight into the culture and languages of the Aboriginal peoples, which illustrate the cultural diversity and abundant history in Taiwan. On the way back, we can watch the magnificent scenery of the Pacific Ocean along the coast. Finally, Cindy will wrap up the speech with more ideas. Thank you, David. All in all, this three-day trip will certainly be a memorable experience to them, not only enriching their knowledge of Taiwan, but also fueling their interest in knowing more about this wonderful island. I believe that they will come back again and become the best spokesman for Taiwan in their own country. And that's all. Thank you.
第十五对演讲题目是 Number Four， 计时开始。Good morning, dear judges. In this globalization era, competence around the world strikes like a strong tide. Even a little glimpse of error can roll you out of the game. International mobility is one of the fancy glossaries out there that best describes the phenomenon here. Contrary to how it might sound like about transportation velocity or have anything to do with physics, this is actually a survival index to modern youngsters like us. To acquire international mobility isn't as simple as performing a certain task. It involves a wide variety of skills emphasized only since this century, or even this half decade. Next, my partner Bush is going to tell us more about this topic. Thank you, Wilson. To to start on, let's start to consider things that are essential to modern success. As the word international goes, the ability to conquer country barrier is enormously important. For instance, a doctor might have an exclusive treatment that works really well. However, he won't be able to gain international fortune if he can't speak foreign language fluently. Of course, country barrier involve not only language gap, but also cultural differences. It is advisable that we take a view of cultural pluralism, which means we respect all kinds of culture, even though some are different from us. Trying to do so might make us rude. While manner is a small thing, sometimes devils lie in details. However, all of this does not mean we have to embrace everything outside and dispose of our original culture. Sometimes our own culture intrigues people. Just like when speaking English is practical, Mandarin has its own beauty, and we should learn to balance in between. And that is what differs globalization from globalization, in which the former outclass the latter for scaling, constructions, and destructions. Next, my partner Mina will tell you more about international mobility. Thank you, Bush. Breeding professionalism is also a critical task. The core of the trait is actually learning how to learn. Statistics show that what we learn in school only come in handy for three years, not to mention that the time never stops moving. So we can only expect that what we acquire today will be obsolete tomorrow. To overturn this, we need to diagnose the root of the problem. We believe that it's because Taiwan emphasizes science over humanities. Albert Einstein once said. The value of an education in a liberal arts college is not the learning of many facts, but the training of the mind to think something that cannot be learned from textbooks. This concept also corresponds to creativity, which is again pivotal on the road to success. I personally agree with a long-existing argument saying that Taiwanese are not as strong as Westerners because of ignoring humanities. Unless the spirit of analyzing and deducting. Can be thoroughly implemented to the society of our beautiful island, else the effort of improving our offspring's intelligence might turn out to using a glass of water to try to put off the fire. Next, my partner Vincent will do the conclusion. Thank you. Enhancing our international mobility is a task that we must perform right now. Look around us; the countries in Southeast Asia are on the rise, and by this trend. We are going to be outpaced by them. It's just a matter of sooner or later. Many people hold the belief that countries like Vietnam or Thailand are still falling far behind us. Well, it's partially true if you consider the GDP per capita, which is like not even half of us. But that's because of the unbalanced development between their most rural areas and their most advanced areas. If you look at their most developed areas, like Bangkok, for example, you'll feel like they are only. Ahead behind us, or even worse, a neck ahead of us. Sarah Rotman once said, "Cozy lives, lazy, smart minds. For you shall not soak yourself in the achievement that our past ancestors led. We should try to stop, step out, and we'll reach the height that we used to be, and conquer a new land 
for the sake of our future generations. Only till then, we can help proudly to the world that we are the citizens of international triumph. And may the odds even ever be in your favour. That's all our speech for today. Please give us a round of applause. Thank you. 第七对演讲题目是 Number One， 计时开始。The new southbound policy is very important that our country is trying to promote as hard as it can. It includes certain crucial guidelines for us to follow when dealing with international affairs, especially with the ones in Southeast Asia. The purpose behind this policy is to combine market, technology, agriculture, production, and even education in the Association of Southeast Asian Nation, also called Asian in short, into one united union. Many South Asian countries are growing rapidly as our global supply chain undergoes physical change. Therefore, it is very important for us to learn how to cooperate with them. However, what are the main qualities that Taiwan would use to attract other countries? In our opinion, the three main qualities are medical care system, industrial refinement, and the exchange of human talent. Now, Annie will tell us more about it. Thank you, Emma. Taiwan's medical technology has long been renowned internationally, ranking the third place in the world while and first in Asia. Why is it so outstanding? For example, fast recovery time and small incision surgery have been the focal point of the medical industry. And Taiwan has completed more than 10,000 cases of the microsurgical reconstruction surgery, which is far more successful than Europe and the United States. Therefore, applying our medical technology into Southeast Asian country will be a market for us. Nowadays, there are still many children and elders still die due to the lack of medical resources. If we could fill up the deficiency in the region, it would not only make their health better, but also make more money to us. And now, Michael is going to share Taiwan's next standout quality. Thank you, Annie. Do you know that the fish fabric can be the fish scales can be used to make clothes. Well, the technology is called Umerfill, that we could mix acid with textile and material in a, into a, a whole new fabric, which was a great, was a softer, was a softer, was a softer texture, and texture, with a softer texture. Wait a second. It's a softer texture. Wait. Holy fabric. And the most important of all, it will not be allergic to anyone. And the the, the industry refinement not only uh, not only affect the textile but textile industry, but also but also the textile industry. All right, the next standout quality is the pet bottle that we use every day. Uh, it may treat it as a trash, but we can use it. We can use it as a building brick. Well, it sounds crazy, right? Well, we have built a building with 1.5 million <laughs> plastic bottles, uh, which is really amazing that we. Really it's amazing. It is amazing that. We, uh, that we to create a whole new technology that makes that. All right. Oh, now my teammate Zoe will conclude, continue our speech. Thank you, Michael. The 
interaction with the outstanding graduates is a great way to learn from one another. Our fascinating study programs have attracted many students from all over the country. However, it seems to be not enough. In order to improve Taiwanese culture, we, it is necessary to design a program that is related to international cooperation. To sum up, the advantages of health, medical health, textile industry, and the outstanding students are the standout qualities in Taiwan. And we are also superb in making computer electronic components, farming, tourism, and food industry. And now it's time for us to take the action. As long as we work hard, I believe we will succeed in the end. Thank, Thank you. The is number two. Manners make men. It's a famous quote from the smash hit movie, Kingsman, borrowed from the school model of the new college at Oxford University. But what does this imply? It is not by class, money, or property that an individual is defined, but by how he or she behaves towards other people. Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. The successful cultural and economic integration of a global village depends on international etiquette to facilitate understanding and cooperation. Here, my teammate Cindy will elaborate more. Thank you, Eric. At the global level, an individual is defined by how he or she behaves toward others, and their behavior reflects the image of the country they represent. Therefore, International etiquette is exceedingly important. This summer, when I was waiting for my connecting flight at Zhangyi International Airport in Singapore, during lunch at a fast food restaurant, I saw a group of Malaysian exchange students about my age sitting at the table nearby. The restaurant was crowded and people were chatting loudly, but I couldn't help but notice how the Malaysian students spoke quietly while demonstrating their best table manners. After finishing their meal, they cleaned the table, assorted the waste, and even put their chairs back under the table. I was impressed. A well-known German writer, Goethe, once said, one's courtesy is a mirror reflecting his portrait. And in turn, in today's global village, the courteous individual is a mirror reflecting the image of the country they represent. What do you think, Ludian? Thank you, Cindy. I can't agree with you more. Etiquette varies from culture to culture, but the common thread is the mutual respect for others. Punctuality is definitely one of the most significant norms to follow. Mr. Zhou Liu, Vice President of 3M's Asia Pacific and China region, once said, he would always regret losing a $2 million deal because he was late for an appointment with a buyer at Toyota. The famous Taiwanese film star, Shu Qi, was once late for a Hollywood audition, which resulted in her being denied entry and in turn caused tremendous damage to her public image. Nowadays, as the world integrates more tightly than ever, being punctual is one of the cornerstones of international etiquette. In other words, being on time is a must when cooperating with people in this international community. But there is more than that, Jeannie. Thank you, Ludian. Punctuality is absolutely essential. Nowadays, with the rapid increase of interaction and cooperation between different cultures, misunderstandings are inevitable. Therefore, I believe the spirit of mutual respect would decrease the frequency at which misunderstandings occur. During a diplomatic mission in 1861, British envoy Amherst greeted the Chinese emperor. Unfortunately, a conflict arose from cultural differences about kneeling etiquette, and fallout from the disastrous meeting triggered the Opium War. Last year, 
some high school students in Xinzhu staged what they thought was a harmless Nazi parade, which led to condemnations from Israel and Germany. Obviously, the Xinzhu students were ignorant of the cultural implications of Nazi symbolism. Otherwise, they never would have held such a demonstration. Thus, mutual respect and understanding of the core value of international etiquette. By demonstrating our empathy, thoughtfulness, and courtesy, we are showing respect not only to others, but reflecting back on the standards of Taiwan. Back to you, Eric. Thank you, Jenny. The importance of international etiquette is paramount to all other considerations. Etiquette not only reflects the image of an individual, but also of the representative nation. Punctuality leads to efficiency and opportunity in a global marketplace. And finally, with mutual respect, misunderstandings between individuals or even countries can be avoided. Manners makes men is not just a slogan. It's a golden rule of globalization. I believe people of good manners will always be welcome, no matter where they go. Thank you. 第四对演讲题目是 Number Two， 计时开始。Good morning, dear judges, ladies and gentlemen. With the help of advanced development of transportation as well as instant communication through the internet, every single person in our global village, influenced by globalization, have more and more chances to interact with others in different interesting ways nowadays. Although it is true that we enjoy such wonderful interaction with people from different countries, it is important for us to, internet, to interact with others in different interesting ways nowadays. Although it is true that we enjoy such wonderful interaction with people from different countries, it is important for us to understand international etiquette, to avoid offensive behaviors, build a rapport, and facilitate effective communication among individuals from various cultural backgrounds. Therefore, as a global citizen, learning international etiquette is necessary because it helps us to communicate with others in an appropriate and effective way. Serene. Thank you, Stephen. First, we see formal international etiquette as important because a set of generally accepted manners is quite useful and easy to follow when we would like to interact with people from various cultural backgrounds in a proper way. We have to know desirable manners in order not to offend unconsciously or cause unnecessary problems when we face important persons from different countries. For example, to learn table manners well is a must for Asian people like us. Because knowing these techniques helps us fit in Western culture and thus behave properly without being laughed at. Take clothing as another example. When it comes to what to wear in a dinner party, dressing up in a tuxedo or evening gown is often more welcome than wearing casual outfits like jeans and t-shirts. Hence, to understand and to know a set of generally accepted international etiquettes helps us fit in well and avoid awkwardness in important social events. Cindy. Thank you, Thierry. Another importance of learning international etiquette lies in its happiness of building up rapper and avoid impliedness among different groups of people from exotic culture. Without understanding different manners in various countries, we cannot know what is important and implied for people from foreign countries. Therefore, to stimulate affinity and prevent impliedness between foreigners and us, we should be careful about particular etiquettes with different, but profoundly mean for foreign countries. For example, if we realize putting somebody in the back or kissing someone on the cheeks is generally accepted by people in the USA, we will not be confused when we see common things with your friends. Besides, if we know that it is appropriate to put something on the hands in Thailand, we will not offend others in real way. Getting familiar with these social manners will definitely help us a lot in socializing with foreign people. Vivian. Thank you, Cindy. The that's perhaps the most important part of learning international etiquette. It's its function of facilitating effective communication. To avoid communication breakdown, we have to know a single gesture could have different meanings in different cultures. For example, 
Nadine once had means of agreement in both China and America. However, it is completely the opposite in India. Moreover, Taiwanese people only need one hand to present a gesture for number six, while Japanese people need two hands to use less gestures. As a result, understanding different usages of gestures is essential for successful communication. Stephen. Thank you, Vivian. All in all, given the above three reasons for learning international etiquette, we choose to be open-minded and flexible to adjust ourselves to fit in different cultures. We believe that learning international etiquette would help us appropriately behave in social events, successfully build a rapport, and facilitate effective communication. For these important reasons, we, as global citizens with scope, need to be familiar with essential international etiquette to interact with others properly in so many interesting exotic cultures. As an old saying goes, when in Rome, do as the Romans do, we would like to make good use of international etiquette to reach successful communication in foreign contexts. Wow. Thank you. 第三对演讲的题目是 number five, Good morning, dear judges. As the dawn of globalization draws near, it has greatly impacted the economics, politics, culture, and relationships between countries. Faced with such revolutionary transformations, countries around the globe have adopted new strategies and policies. The recent talk of Asia has been Taiwan's new southbound policy, with ambitious and innovative approaches creating win-win situations between Taiwan and the southbound countries. Yet, what is the new southbound policy targeted towards? And what can we, the youths of Taiwan, do to aid in such endeavors? Now, let's welcome Angel. The new Southbound policy focuses on strengthening interaction and multi-level cooperation with the Southbound countries. Industrial-wise, Vietnam and Laos boast distinct advantages in labor cost, allowing Taiwanese company to outsource labor, creating benefits and working opportunities for both country. Highly populated countries such as India and Pakistan is an unfamiliar market to the Taiwanese corporation. Taiwan has exquisite agricultural technique, electronic product, and soft power, which can fit the needs and create mutual benefits in these markets. Medical-wise, our national healthcare insurance is one of the best healthcare system in the world. We can serve as reference for other southbound countries and also reference from countries such as New Zealand and Australia for their elderly caring system. Now, let's welcome Charlene. Yet, as use of Taiwan that lack the means to assist in industrial, agricultural, or medical fields, how can we take part in policy implementation? While the new southbound policy focuses heavily on reinforcing economic links, Taiwan's main strength has always been our people. More and more citizens from our partner nations are coming to Taiwan, be it for academic or tourism purposes. As youth of Taiwan, we can serve as advocates in cultural exchanges, spreading the Taiwanese spirit of kindness. For example, our government offers many scholarships to southbound countries, therefore providing us with many chances to interact with these foreign students. At the same time, the Taiwanese Ministry of Education sponsors many overseas scholarships and internships for outstanding Taiwanese youth. We can organize events introducing culture to one another or guide them to visit famous tourist landmarks. Youth can serve as the ideal cultural ambassadors of the new southbound policy, acting as active bridges between the citizens and the government. 
Now, let's welcome Jasmine. Since the new South Bond policy is a long-term plan, our goal is to cultivate more language proficiency personnel. Therefore, more Taiwanese universities offering language courses of southbound countries, thus increasing the depth of culture exchange in all aspects. With the improvement of relationship, there will be more working opportunities in partner nations. Now, let's welcome Claire. Through the understanding of this new southbound policy, we know that youth play an undeniable vital role. As the youth of Taiwan, we thank the government for offering opportunities of education and internships in the southbound countries. Yet, we should grasp these chances and vigorously participate in the new southbound policy. Thank you.